And joining us today in our Book Talk segment, great to welcome, man, has written a really interesting book about an investment that didn't go too well. It's called The Great Beanie Baby Bubble, Mass Delusion of the Dark Side of Cute. We're joined today by Zach Bissonnette from up in New York today. And uh, Zach, good to talk with you. How are you today? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, good to have a chance to, to chat with you. I had an opportunity to read through the book. I, I know your previous books have been uh, on business and, and finance and that. And this book is, has the same kind of angle, but really more of a historical story, too, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Very different. What, uh, what got you in, interested in this uh, particular topic? Yeah, well, I've always been interested in speculative bubbles and, you know, the, the, the railroad bubble, the Internet bubble, the real estate bubble, um, and that kind of thing. And, and I was in college in 2010, 2011, getting ready to graduate into the worst job market um, in a very, very long time <laughs> because of the sort of fallout of the speculative bubble in real estate. And I was in an auction one day a little country auction, and sitting on the back of the room on a table were a few Rubbermaid containers filled with Beanie Babies in absolutely mint condition with plastic tag protectors on the tags, Lucite containers for some of them, and then all of these books and magazines and checklists and spreadsheets about what each one was, was supposed to be worth. Um, and what was so interesting about it wasn't the Beanie Babies themselves, but the manifest conviction of whoever had assembled this collection that it would one day be of great value. And I just got interested in, like, how could someone have thought that? And how could so many people have thought that? And what was the process that allowed this kind of mass delusion of, of, of millions of people thinking that Beanie Babies were going to go up in value to become so widespread? And I just thought if I could understand that, maybe I could understand some of the larger economic forces that drive our lives. Yeah, I, I never bought them. I remember when they came out and, 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 and the craze that they caused. But when you look at it, it's just a, a stuffed animal. But somehow the marketing behind it, you talk about it in the book, uh, they created a... Uh, created a demand somehow, right? That, what, was this intentional from the beginning, or did it kind of work work into that? It was not intentional from the beginning. It was totally by accident in the beginning, and then tied to a very, very good job of, of, of jumping on it. What happened was that he introduced them in 1994, and at first there was no real interest in them. But Ty had this obsessive compulsive, kind of Steve Jobs as kind of mad scientist approach to product design, and, um, and he would change the pieces after they'd been released, because he decided they'd look better a different way. So he originally had Peanut the Royal Blue Elephant, and then after a few thousand of those ships, he shipped, he decided that it should be light blue. And he had Old Face Teddy, who had sort of a flat face, and he decided the face should be rounder. So he had all these different variants of Beanie Babies. No one cared. Fast forward to early 1996, Beanie Babies started to catch on just as a popular toy among kids in the Chicago suburbs. They'd bring them to school in their pockets and show them to their friends. And then the mothers started to get interested because some collectors stores that kind of catered to that demographic were selling Beanie Babies too. And a small group of women started to try to assemble complete collections of Beanie Babies. And they realized that was much harder to do than they would have thought because there were all these rare variations. And so they started to pay ever rising prices to acquire, you know, pieces like Peanut the Royal Blue Elephant. And the stories of those rising prices created this momentum that lured in more collectors. It's almost like a, a woman's version of uh, baseball cards for guys. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and, and totally. I mean, although you know, I will say one of the one of the sales reps for Ty told me that she remembered, um, you know, visiting the stores when, when when she would go in to check on inventory and that kind of thing. And in the early days, it was so cute because it was all these little kids so excited about Beanie Babies. And then she told me, you know, by 1998, it was just these creepy, belligerent men. Yeah, I guess they got into it when they figured there might be some money to be made. I know you talk about it in a book. Uh, uh, one Be Beanie Baby sold for ten thousand dollars at one point, right? On eBay, yeah. is that right? Uh, yes, yes. That, that's a, and that person thought that that would go up in value from ten thousand. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that, that's the funny thing is that these people were paying, you know, five thousand dollars for peanut. Not uh, thinking it was going to be worth more. I, no, I mean you're totally right. I, I, you know, I actually hadn't even thought of it like that. But it, it, it's insane. And you talk also in the book how, how eBay, in a sense, uh, kind of brought an end to the bubble, right? Quicker than it would have been. eBay was funny because you know Beanie Babies kind of built eBay in the early days of e-commerce. It wasn't growing as fast as people thought it would. Um, partly because people just had no pressing reason to buy things online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they were a little afraid of it. It was new. 
And then all of a sudden you have these Beanie Babies that you were impossible to find locally, were easy to ship, and where the prices were fluctuating so much that you, you wanted to be sure that you were paying sort of a fair price. And an online auction was a perfect way to do that. And so Beanie Babies rose on eBay, and, and in its early SEC filings, eBay was disclosing its dependence on the Beanie Baby market and saying, you know, look, if this thing collapses, our revenues are going to suffer. <laughs> Ultimately, what happened was the people went on to eBay for Beanie Babies. The Beanie Baby thing died, and then those people started buying everything else on eBay. But without Beanie Babies, eBay may never have gotten off the ground. Yeah, it, it helped eBay, but it uh, it hurt the Beanie Baby market, right? It, it In flooded, the end, right? Be, well, what, well, so you know, by 1999, you had you know at times you know 80,000 listings for Beanie Babies on yeah. eBay. And the sales had risen so much, there were so many people trying to cash in that there were just more buyers, more sellers than buyers all of a sudden. And, you know, pre-internet, it wouldn't have been so transparent because, you know, when people were relying on price guides, the price guides would be inaccurate and no one would know and you could kind of fake out the market right. longer. But, 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 but by the time you could just log online and see that no one was going to buy your stuff, that was it. And you talk again about the guy who who put a price guide together, right? I guess he sold, what, three million copies of it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he sold, th yes, th yes, uh, Les Fox, he sold three million copies of it. It's self-published, <laughs> one of the one, one of the best-selling self-published books of all time. So, so he made his money he, on he that. Predicted me, <laughs> he predicted what each animal would be worth in 10 years. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, when you think about that, and he sold them, a, a lot of those copies, through the gift shops that sold Beanie Babies. So think about the synergy of that. If you're a gift shop owner, you have a stack of Beanie Babies, $5 each, and then next to that stack, you have this big best-selling book predicting that all of the animals are going to make you rich. <laughs> <laughs> Good marketing, marketing. And, and, Good market. and Ty Warner, you mentioned him before, uh, the man in charge, and and you go into kind of his personal uh, history, personal story as well. He, he had kind of a crazy life, didn't he? A wild, wild life, a lot of sadness, a lot yeah. of darkness. Yeah, sad uh, uh, what he went through, but uh, now, did that... What, what, what's the status right now of, of the company? Do they, I guess they still make them, right? I see little stuff. Yeah, it, it, the is store, still right? the, it is still the most successful plush animal company on the planet. They have a newish line called Beanie Boos that look kind of like Beanie Babies, but with these big alien eyes. Um, if you go to you know a CVS <laughs> or a Dwayne Reed, you'll see them. A lot of people think they're terrifying. I think they're cute, <laughs> and they are they are very popular. Um, so it, it's it's funny. I mean, to give you an idea of how big the Beanie thing was, you know, he still the biggest plush company there is, but his sales are, you know, probably 5% of what they were. Do you think uh, anybody made, other than, you know, people who got in early, made money on these, on the sales? Oh, yeah, no, so, oh, yes, some some of the early Chicago collectors, Did well. you know, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, very well. Yeah. <laughs> well it's, it's a great story. Yeah, so, I mean, I go into their stories in the book, it's, you know, yeah. The Great Beanie Baby Bubble is the name of the book. We've been talking with Zach Bissonette today. And I know it just came out this week. Zach, you, you want to give out a website and get a hold of you of the book? Uh, just go to Amazon. That's all you need. Okay. <laughs> and we have a place on our website, too, that connects to Amazon. But, Zach, appreciate you taking a few minutes. Uh, great uh, great idea for a book. A and we'll talk to you again. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.